Hey guys, it's me KSMR here, and today I'm going to be reading a Hinata Shoyo X listener. This one is titled Sunlight, and I'm so excited to read this because I haven't read a Hinata one in such a long time, and I love Hinata so much. Like, if you took the word perfect and made it a human, it would be Hinata, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love him a lot. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of the intro, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right on into the video. Oh no, excuse me, but do you know the direction to class 1 3? You spun around slowly to reveal a chillingly cold look towards a directionally challenged boy. To him, the atmosphere suddenly felt darker, the air felt heavier, as if the temperature had dropped 20, 20 degrees. What? You respond coldly. The boy shuddered, frozen in place. Before you knew it, two other boys grabbed the seemingly paralyzed boy and dashed away, out of your sight. You looked quizzingly at the direction that they ran off to, removing one of your earbuds. What did he say? Oi, be careful, don't you know that's the ice queen? It, it, it is? Yeah, you should keep away from her. I heard from the first friend she made that she was almost killed in a blizzard or something, and they had to move schools. Oh, I heard that she also curses people that mess with her. I think that's what happened to one of the boys that bullied her. He was in the hospital the next day. You scowled, eavesdropping at their not-so-secret conversation as you wrapped your earphones neatly into your knapsack. Is that what they say now? Rumors had grown far more far-fetched as the years go by, although you'd like to clear up a few misconceptions. One, your first friend didn't move because she almost died in a blizzard. She moved because she was getting teased for being involved with you. And two, the boy who had bullied you had slipped on a banana and fell on his head, prompting him a visit to the hospital. The fact that he was teasing you at the time was purely coincidental. Your name was first name, last name, also known as the Ice Queen. Bad things seem to happen to people who associate themselves with you. At least, that's what people say. Your infamous re reputation has followed you tentatively like a shadow since you had first enrolled at the school. The time, or time after time, hearing various, hearing different variations of your tentable gossips grew very old, and mumbling yourself, or mumbling yourself, was the best way to cope with these indirect attacks. And why were you called the Ice Queen? You may ask. Because of your face. Yep, your face. Not that you were hideous or anything, oh no, far from it. Sadly, your frightening demeanor trumps your very beautiful beauty. You were externally emotionless, almost akin to a robot. You lack the ability to express yourselves other than looking as if you are going to commit a murder toward anyone who dares gives you eye contact. People around you often get chills down their spine just by staring in your direction, and the rumors definitely didn't help either. You had this strange effect on people, for as long as you could remember, your icy semblance granted you an inevitable nickname at an early age, and ever since then, people have been keeping their distance from you. Although every now and again, you might get a few anonymous death threat- What the f- Okay. Death threat stuffed in your locker, which you were used to. Your slightly dampened mood seemed to exude even an even more dark aura around you, your fellow students shuffling out of the way, parting like the Red Sea as you walked down the middle of the hallway. Oh, and today was your first day of high school. You had the smallest inkling of hope that being in a new environment would grant you with some blank slate that you have desired that you have desired for oh so long. But no, unfortunately, the result was the same as it has always been. I don't know, it's really hard to love yourself when other people only see the things that are wrong with you. It's okay though, I mean, you were used to it after all, but at least you were never late to class or had to share your lunch or even had the possibility of making small talk, which we all know can be very awkward. But you caught a glimpse of a group of girls in your classroom giggling and pushing each other playfully, making humorous pleasantries and practically bathing in their com camaraderie. But it does get kind of lonely. All right, class, welcome. I'm Fura Date Sensei. Oh, isn't that the creator? Oops. Um, nice to meet you. You had propped your head or your hand on your head, gazing at the life outside. And of course, you are painfully aware of the empty seat next to you, as everyone had selected their seats for the year. Furudate Sensei passed a chart for everyone to sign their names onto, accordance to where they were sitting. Okay, now let's get on with the lesson. Ah, shit. Wait, I said shit. I went to that. Ah, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm here to show you. A boy yelled as he barged in. He didn't need to announce his name. Ah, right. Uh, Hinata, please take your seat next to... He looked around, seeing if there was an empty seat in the chart. Miss first name. You raised your you raised your other hand lazily, your gaze still focused on the outside. You would hurry your chair next to you, screech, and a plop following soon after. Um, hello. Please take care of me. 
You turn slightly, expecting the boy to look instantly away, as he was afraid of you. You have truly tried your best to look welcoming, but it never... It never faltered because your face always looked like it wasn't ever genuine. You saw his breath hitch and his face instantly become contorted, from glee to shock. I knew it. He's gonna end up afraid of me like everyone else. But as soon as you saw his cheeks redden and his chocolate brown eyes full of glitter, like stars, you wound up being confused. You face him- wait. The face you mistakenly expected to be horrified was actually one of admiration. <laughs> Pretty. Your eyes widened in shock. Well, as much shock as your face could show. His comment, though only for your ears, caught the attention of everyone else surrounding the two of you. Or his comment, that was only supposed to be meant for your ears, had caught the attention of everyone surrounding you. Everyone started whispering to each other, unbeknownst to the orange-haired kid who was still looking at you with awe. The sensei yelled, a settle down, and the class immediately shifted their attention to the teacher again. The only thing that you could do in such an awkward situation was turn back around, seemingly giving him the cold shoulder. However, his sweet, one-word compliments still echoed in the back of your mind. Hinata, all flustered, clamped his mouth shut and turned abruptly towards the front of the classroom after mindlessly blurting out something so creepy and ogling at the girl so at, at the girl so blatantly. He felt embarrassed, and yet quite elated. Wow, I'm sitting next to a cute girl. A really, really cute girl. He snuck a glance from the side to fully absorb your dazzling appearance. You had long, silky, dark hair and that would reflect the beautiful sheen or that reflect a beautiful sheen from the sunlight beside you your eyes dear lord were they imperial pools of whatever color your eyes are that he wouldn't mind drowning himself in you had this mysterious air around you that kind of attracted him more as he was shuffling to look through his bag for a writing utensil he had found himself more and more fretful as he didn't as he realized he didn't have one be sure to take good notes class this material is going to be covered for the rest of the week on the test Huh? But what am I gonna do? I'll fail if I don't have any notes. I mean, I could ask someone for notes, but I... His... In his peripheral, he saw someone handing something to him. A pencil. The pretty girl was handing him a pencil. Albeit still looking forward while jotting her, or jotting down her own notes, his heart swelled at the kind gesture. He took the utensil from her hand slowly and whispered a grateful thanks before quickly catching up on his notes. You snuck... A glance from the side to fully absorb his appearance. He had messy orange hair that reminded you of all sorts of things. Tangerines, autumn leaves, the sun, things that brought life so much color and warmth. It's vibrant, presumably like his personality. His eyes, they were a rich brown that held so much kindness and determination that you wished that you could express. He had a welcoming air around him, and that made you envy him more. You, you then noticed that he had a worried face on his- he had a worried look on his face as he was looking through his pencil bag. He had sacks of notebook paper in his desk, but no pencil. Should you help him out? Would he be scared of you this time? Please make sure to take good notes in class, as material is going to be covered on the test next week. Their orange-haired boy, Hinata was it? Seemed more panic-stricken, tussling through his already messy hair in trepidation. You sighed, handing him the extra pencil that you had. All why not giving him eye contact? You didn't know how he would react, so you looked at him again. You heard him murmur a meek, thank you, before going back to his notes. He smiled a little. His voice was really cute. It had been two weeks since school started, and Hinata had befriended a few new classmates very quickly. I mean, they were more acquaintances than friends, but he still enjoyed their company. To Hinata's disappointment, it's also been two weeks since he's made any sort of contact with you. He still had the pencil that you gave him, but never had a chance to give it back to you. He obviously didn't talk to you during class, because you were always the first one to leave. And oddly enough, you would scurry off who or you would scurry off to who knows where during lunchtime. He finally questioned one of his fellow classmates at the start of lunch break. Ne Takusa-san or Tatsuki-san, where does first time go after lunch or during lunch? Oh, you don't know? She goes to the rooftop. Nobody really goes up though. there. Well, probably because she's up there. You know, since she's the- Oh, okay, I'll be right back. Hina said, Hina said, repacking his lunch. Huh? Where are you going? You took your favorite rice ball from your bento and took a small bite from it. All while hearing your favorite band sing through your earbuds. You had sat with your knees towards your chest as you backed- As you had your back leaning across the wall, or on the wall near the doorway. The rooftop was the perfect place for you. 
away from the undesirable scrutiny of others. It was definitely better than eating lunch in the classroom, all by your lonesome. You had dazed onto the day- You had gazed on the night- Oh my god. On the daytime sky, painted with comforting shades of blue, accompanied with the ember sun. It was a contradicting feeling. These were times where you didn't mind being alone, yet you wouldn't mind having a friend who experienced these things with. First name son, you heard- or you turned to the source of the voice, taking out one of your one of your earbuds. It was the orange-haired kid. Hinata son? You asked quietly, what are you doing here? He gave you a gleaming grin as he placed his fist atop his hips. I came to ask- well, I can ask you the same thing. Um, why are you here all by yourself? You looked at him with a puzzled look, still disbelief- or still in disbelief that somebody actually was talking to you without looking fearful. Then, realizing his question, you averted your eyes, looking down at your knees. No reason, you said softly. What? I want to know. Why? Your heart oddly started stinging. Does he know? Of course he does. Everyone does. You want to view- wait. You want to view all of this to yourself, huh? Don't you? He kidded, a grin- the grin on his face becoming more radiant and bright. Your face suddenly felt warm. I guess he doesn't know. No, not at all. It sure is frizzy, isn't it? He asked rhetorically as he plopped right next to you, opening his own bento box, then proceeded to talk to you about different details about himself while munching on some meat buns, like family, volleyball, food, volleyball. It was a very pleasant feeling, talking to someone who didn't care about, or who, who hasn't a care in the world and just has a great passion towards something, but something bothered you. Hinata-san? You interrupted him. Hmm? He asked. His voice was slightly muffled, a meat bun still stuffed in his mouth. Aren't you scared of me? He swallowed the rest of his meat bun. Should I be scared of you? He questioned, cocking his head a little to the side in a childlike confusion. You gazed on at your knees, hugging them tighter. Tighter. Oh my god, why do I keep saying stuff like that? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, everyone else is. You say, almost sadly, betraying your emotionless face. I'm the ice queen, after all. He stared at you for a moment, then sprawled his legs out and looked up at the sky. You know, I'm in the volleyball cl club, and I have this teammate. His nickname was the King of the Court. Well, it still is, actually. I think it sounds pretty cool, but he doesn't like it. You listened intently. He was called all kinds of mean things in the court, you know, ordering his- or- Oh yeah, ordering his teammates around and stuff. I battled, I battled him once in a tournament in middle school. He was so scary looking. After he beat me, I swore we would be lifelong rivals. He continued, his fist in the air, with fire burning in his eyes. Where is he going with this? But, I mean, after being on the same team, I can see that he's changed from the last time that I saw him. Plus, it's thanks to him that I can feel the heft of the ball every time, and keep playing. Although, he still is really scary looking. He said, suddenly frightened as the image of his teammates glaring at him appeared in his mind. He laughed inwardly, then he turned to face you with a signature smile of his. What I've learned from him is that you shouldn't let labels define you, or labels define you if you don't want to. Your eyes widen at the su surprisingly sound advice, feeling strong waves of impact hit on you. You're a very nice person, first name son. I would have never guessed you had such a nickname. Although I think it sounds cool. <laughs> I wish I had a cool nickname. He pouted. You, gigg you giggled outwardly. For the first time in forever, you had caught yourself doing so. You stopped immediately, hoping that the action wouldn't scare him off. Little did you know, that action caused a fluttery feeling in the orange-haired boy's stomach, which appeared when he had first laid eyes on you, only to increase. He had felt accomplished as he had been able to get such an expression out of you. Oh, and before I forget, he said it as, as he dug his hands into his pocket and pulled out a pencil. Here, thanks again for Samson, you really saved me. You're a really, really good friend. Friend? You looked at the pencil and then at him. The boy was so pure-hearted. So high-spirited. How could you be so lucky to have such a person in your life? You can keep it if you want, you said, wanting him to keep the object that connects the two of you. He gawked at you, mouth agape. Really? He asked, red tinting his cheeks. You nodded, before packing what remains of your lunch that you had and standing up to add to class, with an even happier Hinata following behind you. Although, what he had failed to tell you is that even with the notes he took with your pencil, he still failed the test. The two of you sauntered over to class, while you listened to Hinata as he explained practice match, or the practice match that his volleyball club had the other day in his own poetic way, filled with a bunch of guas and ohs. 
very animated was, or the way he talked was very animated, but you understood completely. His presence made you feel warm. For once, you didn't feel so alone. You felt whole, and you would hope that this newfound feeling of animity or amenity would go away. However, you started following from your own cloud nine as you saw people staring at you two in the hallway, whispering to each other. You then remembered your own reputation and quickly thought about Hinata's well-being. That's right, they're gonna talk about him too. Hinata's gonna be part of another rumor that they're making, and you really didn't want that. Your pace got significantly slower as you eventually stopped walking. He halted a few steps ahead of you, looking back at you curiously. First time someone, what's wrong? Hinata-san, I don't think you should associate yourself with me anymore. You said softly, lowering your gaze, or slowly gazing at him with your usual stone face. He looked taken aback, visibly hurt by your words. What do you mean? You felt guiltier by the second, and then brushed right past him, entering your classroom. Wait, first time son, hold on. Why would you say that? He ran up to you, or he ran to catch up to you. He then looked at you as he looked down at your desk. Wait, then... He then looked, he then found you looking down at your desk, hands clenched and trembling. As he had made his way to where you were, he saw a horrible sight. Your desk was filled with insults and demands written obnoxiously with black marker, such as, get the hell out, cold bitch, freak. Hinata felt himself get heated, clenching his own fist. Who would do such a thing? This is why. I mean, bad things happen whenever you're involved with me, or with everyone who's involved with me. You said, looking down at the vandalized desk with a sad smile. No, no, no. He didn't want to see that kind of expression on you. He felt himself get angrier, gritting his teeth. He looked around and saw a few rough-looking delinquents in the back, stifling laughter. At this point, Hinata could no longer hold himself back. Oi! You guys over there, did you do this? The guys seemingly looked surprised at the little one's outburst before their leader spoke up with a smug look on his face. Yeah, so what if we did? Everyone here knows that we're better off without her. Don't you know she's cursed? He had just slammed his fist onto his own desk, silencing them. He was looking down, panting slightly, before looking at the guy, revealing his own frightened look. His bangs cast over, or cast a shadow over his dark brown eyes, filled with fire. The leader gulped. Cursed? Hinata whispered lowly. Cursed? Who the hell even cares about stuff like that? She's still a person, and she still has feelings. She, or he bellowed, raging a rage filling his lungs. You were shocked at the events that were currently unfolding, as everyone was. No one had ever defended you in this way. Not ever. And you couldn't understand why he would go so far when you barely even knew each other. You wanted to stop him, but you also didn't want people to talk about him in a bad light. You slowly reached out from behind him to grab his attention. Hinata-san, please. He didn't listen. His passion-filled emotions took over him, or took hold of him completely now and nothing else could reach him except for this, or until this predicament was solved. He pointed out to the rest of his classmates, and guys, you saw what happened, didn't you? And you guys, you saw this happen, didn't you? Everyone else averted their eyes shamefully, acting like nothing was happening right now. He needed to bit his lip to calm himself down and restrain himself from yelling even more. Have you guys even tried to talk to her? Instead of listening to these stupid rumors? That caught everyone's attention to- that caught everyone's attention. If you even just tried talking to her, he knit a his fist. If you guys just tried at all, you would know what a great person she actually is. Have you seen her harm anybody, hmm? The class looked at each other for any sort of confirmation that you have. There was none. The leader of delinquents stood up abruptly, grasping the sides of his desk. Cut the crap! Come on guys, are we really gonna believe this shorty? Suddenly, one of Hinata's acquaintance, Taku- or Tatsuki, stood up from his seat. Hinata's is right. We- we- we were never fair to my son. He admitted hesitantly, guilt written on his face. I always thought she was intimidating, so the rumors just gave me an excuse not to talk to her. But we never gave her the chance that she deserved. Taku- I keep saying it wrong. Tatsuki then steadily walked towards you. First name, son? He stared straight into your eyes, bowing lowly. I'm really sorry. Then, almost like a domino effect, everyone in class stood and bowed to you as well, giving you a resounding, I'm sorry. You clutched your chest, an indescribable feeling feeling or filling every part of your being. The delinquent was surprised and speechless at the class's sudden behavior. Once he saw the two members of his group bow, he gave in and followed suit after them. Everybody, you breathe, not knowing what else to say. You felt one of your female classmates grab your hand, seeing or others easing closer surrounding you. 
Her same son, can you forgive us? You felt your eyes well with tears, and you brushed them off with your free hand. You were crying. You couldn't believe that you were actually crying. You didn't know where this newfound sensitivity came from, because, or from after all this judgment, after all this isolation, you still kept it together. You had to. But you've come to find out that numbing yourself from everything, what? But you've come to find out that numbing yourself from everything and everyone caused you to bottle up all of your own emotions not knowing when they would burst out. So for the first time in a long time, you could express so many emotions at once. Sadness, because of how long it took you, or how long it took this moment to come. Happiness for that said moment, and relief. So much relief. You couldn't hold back your tears any longer, and you just let them all out. Of course, you sobbed, covering your own face in embarrassment. Everyone gave a relief smile, and some chuckled at your currently key behavior. First new son, if I knew you were this sensitive, I would have talked to you a long time ago, one of your classmates choked. You laughed along with them, feeling quite joyful. You couldn't believe all of this had happened. Wait, you couldn't believe all of this had happened. You felt free, free from the rumors that had chained you down and kept people away from seeing the real you. And it was all thanks to this certain orange-haired boy. He was the first one to see through your stony exterior and see you for the person that you actually were, and for that, you were eternally grateful. There was nothing, or there was never anything wrong with you. People just needed to open their eyes to see that you were a pretty great person. You turned to Hinata, who was standing there, not forgetting him for a second. You gave the boy, wait, you, <laughs> he gave you this gleaming boyish smile, and you returned it with a genuine smile of your own. Hinata-san, you were the first ray of sunlight. I'm the cold, dark winter night that melts underneath you. As I bask in the sun, or the sun's war warming glow, I feel nothing anymore. Its ethereal rays cleanse me, or ethereal, I don't know how you say that. Burn me, heal me, calm me, allowing me to go and reshape my form, allowing me to start anew. <laughs> that was so adorable. <laughs> um, imagine he just smiling at you. Mm, yeah, I would melt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. But that was adorable. Oh my god. Um, they were really bullying me because I looked like an ass. But like people, like my, one of my friends, who we're not really friends anymore because quarantine, we haven't really talked to each other. But she said in sixth grade that she was afraid to talk to me because I looked intimidating. Uh, I mean, I know I have a resting bitch face and everything, but damn, <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. But also, I kind of like when people say that to me because I feel like I I like it what, that I'm intimidating. I don't know. I don't know i don't know why it just makes me happy <laughs> anyways that was kind of a long one. Oh my god that was long i did not realize that i always kind of absorb in the book <laughs> anyways i love hinata so much though he is so beautiful oh my god like hinata yeah have you did y'all see Hina keep dropping my damn thing did y'all see Hinata's receive though because damn man was looking good as fuck but anyways thank you guys for watching if you did like the video make sure you subscribe and tap the notification bell so you know every single time i post a video also like the video because it does something for the debug rhythm and also comment down below some other characters you want me to do and i'll try my best to do them for you guys beware i'm going to be posting a bunch of other content today so yeah i hope you guys enjoy and if you did make my air just said that already oop thank you guys for watching i hope you guys have a fantastic day and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye